Hello there, I didn't see you. I'm here today with Steve. Dude, you're supposed to wear your colonial gear, man. We just get it from Williamsburg. Let me take this stuff off. All right, just a sec. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the show. My name is Brooks Conkle. This is Mobile Movers and Shakers, and I am with Stephen McNair. Stephen McNair. Stephen McNair of McNair Historic Preservation. Okay, cool. Um, so what we're gonna do is have a conversation, talk about some cool stuff. This is so the day that we're filming this uh, is Thursday, the day after Ash Wednesday, uh, which is the day after uh, Fat Tuesday which is the culmination of Mardi Gras, which we just experienced for the previous couple of weeks in, in, in Mobile, right? So um, I heard that Mobile is the, uh, the originator of Mardi Gras. There's is a rumor. That, the is, rumors are true. Rumor. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been going around this year. Can you help confirm hmm. that for us and tell us, uh, tell us about that? Like, why are we, why is Mobile the originator of Mardi Gras rather than our, our famous friends? New Orleans. Cousins. What, what, yeah, exactly. Our cousins. Exactly. It, so. The answer is it's complicated. Okay. Um, be, right. Because you do see a lot of people say 1703 was the first Mardi Gras mm -hmm. in the United States, and we're responsible for that. We kind of think that's true. Uh, the, the way it was described to me by a local historian was in 1703 at 27 Mile Bluff, before Mobile was where it is, uh -huh. there probably was some wine and vibe. There probably was a dinner in preparation for Ash Wednesday. Okay. There was probably a priest. Therefore, it was a bit of a celebration before Ash Wednesday, so that, that could technically count as a carnival celebration. The reality of it is, we really didn't have Mardi Gras as we know it today until 1830. Okay. And in 1830, that's when you see Michael Kraft inventing the Calbellion de Rakin Society, which then was the direct uh, organization that led to New Orleans having Mardi Gras okay. uh, shortly thereafter. Gotcha. And then Joe okay. Ken came later and all that after the war during Reconstruction. So we kind of founded it twice. So Joe Ken, so or people, three times. So people know Joe Kane. So when when was that era? Joe Kane. That was that was during Reconstruction. Okay. So so all when right. the when the the Yankee troops stayed in Mobile after the Civil War to mm -hmm. enforce the the new federal laws and regulations, that's when Joe Kane uh, dressed as a Chickasaw Indian and stood on the back of the coal wagon and rekindled the carnival celebration in Mobile. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And so, if you guys have not noticed, this guy knows some history. Um, <laughs> and so, tell us, tell us why you know all this history. I know it's your passion. So, I've known this guy actually for for a long time. We go back to Eagle Scout days. Actually. Exactly right. Um, and high school. To, to, at high school, and mm. and we're both Eagle Scouts. And uh, this guy's always known history. Has always been the teacher of history. So. Tell us about your company now, what you've got, like where your love of history came from and, and what you're doing right now with your company and what sure. that's about. It's, um, it's a consulting firm. And so what we do is we help preserve and protect historic architecture. Love it. And the way that we do that is by revitalizing and rehabilitating neighborhoods, historic districts, and individual buildings. And so as, uh, part of it is a lot of research. It's a lot of um, it's a lot of archaeological investigation. It's a lot of digging to make sure that you fully understand the architectural relevance and importance of a building. But then there are all these federal and state incentive programs to help pay for the rehabilitation of these properties because everybody knows that historic buildings cost, you know, sometimes yeah. two or three times more than what a warehouse in a cornfield would cost to build. Sure. And so that's when we come in to help facilitate these programs, help with the research, secure the tax credits. And also um, help with the design and compliance and all that goes into these projects. Very cool. So are you um, not only in Mobile, I guess, are you, in, what's your area for, the, for what you're helping folks do these projects? Well, we're based in Mobile, but we have clients as far away as Treme neighborhood in New Orleans, oh, cool. uh, all the way up to uh, North Adams, Massachusetts. Oh, wow. Okay. So you're, okay. Actually a national, you could, you could help anyone mm -hmm. with the historic, historic buildings. Okay. That's amazing. Um, no, that's really cool. So Mobile obviously has some, uh, some flags before we talk about the flags of Mobile. Exactly. <laughs> tell me about this. So th I've seen this new Mardi Gras flag. So before we get off the topic of Mardi Gras, sure. um, I've seen this, this, this new Mardi Gras flag that I've seen around. Tell me about that flag kind of ascribed to us, how that, how that came to be, 
um, and and what it's all about. That was a fun project. So, okay. um, like any like with anything, you start from the start. So in 1988, uh, the city of Mobile adopted through a resolution with the city council a city Mardi Gras flag. Okay. You now you probably see it around. You still see it on people's houses. It's only purple and gold, no green. Um, it says the word Mobile. It has a small mask on it, but it's hard to tell exactly what it is, if it's an organization, a parading organization, or gotcha. if it's the city, it's a little bit ambiguous. And so this, the, these were sold as a fundraiser um, by the YWCA, which is no longer um, active in Mobile, okay. uh, for about a decade. Um, and so in the late 90s, you start to see these not being sold anymore. The copyright mm-hmm. was, is kind of lost in legal limbo. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for over well over a decade now, the city has not had uh, uh, any Mardi Gras flags, um, just because we couldn't legally produce them. So, Interesting. I, th- okay. and this is one of those things where, uh, as as just a um, a lover of flags, yeah, you know, yeah. this this has been on my mind for a while. And so, after moving back to Mobile, I uh, I did everything I could to try to revitalize the old one, actually get the copyright and produce them. Mm-hmm. It didn't work out, but it it was brought to my attention that we just need a new one. We just need to start over. And so, what we did there was we approached the city, we approached Visit Mobile, we approached um, uh, the Carnival Association, MAMGA, Mm -hmm. all these different parading organizations, and asked for buy-in, and ran it by them before we made anything public. Cool. Because we did, yeah, we didn't want this to be um, something where it was, uh, it belonged to one entity or one individual, like the old flag. Mm -hmm. We wanted this to really represent all of Mobile Mardi Gras across the spectrum. Um, And so after about a year of workshopping designs, going back to the drawing board several times, and finally kind of getting the seal of approval from all these different entities, uh, we move forward with it. Um, but to be clear, it has not been officially adopted by the city council. And we did that on purpose because, we, again, we don't want this to be the government-sanctioned flag. Gotcha. You know, we want this to be, like Joe Kane, the people's flag. Gotcha, gotcha. And so it was, uh, it was more of a... a um so I guess not like a, a legalized approval from the city council, but a stamp of approval from all these. You wanted all of their approval to support the design of this. Of Absolutely. This okay. So how do people get them? I mean, if people want one of these flags, like where do they get it? What, what, are they? what we're doing is we're licensing it. Um, and okay. so there are different organizations in the city, whether it's the Mardi Gras stores themselves or mm-hmm. um, apparel stores have them for sale. You can find them online through Moptown Merch. Okay. Um, and so we're not in the production game. Um, we're simply licensing it, licensing it, and we're doing that on purpose, as opposed to the the last design, which was only produced by one entity. We want uh, this to be produced by everybody. Gotcha. Um, and we were, and we would never charge a fee for the city to use it, any kind of government entity, mm-hmm. any parading organization. They have free reign to use this just to promote our city to have a uniform single logo to represent the culture of Mobile. Yeah. No, that's cool. That's cool. So it's not too, uh, it's never too early to get a flag from Mardi Gras. <laughs> Even though we just ended Mardi Gras, it's never too early. So you can go out and get yourself a Mardi Gras flag if you want to. You'll be prepared for next year. Um, I would bet they're on sale right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would bet they're on sale. No, that makes sense. Yeah, it, now is actually the perfect time to get your Mardi Gras flag for right. next year, right? Now is the perfect time. Day after Christmas, get your Christmas gifts for next year. It's the same with Mardi Gras, right? So, um, all right, so... Mobile is something that's kind of cool about us, and I don't know all the history of this, which is why I'm pumped to have you on the show to talk about this, is the um, our rich history in the countries, I guess, that have kind of owned, laid claim, if you will, to our to our area, and so that's why we, I know we have the all the flags that we have. Can we kind of go through those? And I, I know we have a... Um, our city is it a crest? Is that what we should, what what I should call? Yeah, it's the call it? it's the, the shield that the shield uh, okay th- um, that is put on historic homes by the Mobile mm-hmm. Historic Development Commission. Okay, and that features the six flags of Mobile. Right. Okay. So let's. Um. Do you want to talk about them? Is that what we should do? Uh, sure. Should we sure. talk about the flags? I don't know. I don't know how are you gonna. Do we have any samples? Uh, well, I mean, I wasn't exactly prepared to talk about this. Oh, um, okay. I don't really have. Oh, oh, no, no. I, I, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. No, just, we, yeah oh, okay. no, no, no. You caught me on a good day. So, okay. right. Yeah. So we can go through them here. Um, Clearly kind of, not prepared. No, okay. no, not yeah. at all. Not okay, at all. Not at all. Okay. No, this is a bit, you're very lucky here. Um, <laughs> just happen to have them in your pocket today. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. And we can go through the spectrum here where it starts okay. with France and ends with the United States. Oh, ah, perfect. Okay, cool. Um, and so the, uh, with the, with the French flag, um, uh, it, it's the standard white design, the yellow fleur de and mm-hmm. the fleur de themselves are a Christian symbol. Uh-huh. Um, you know, obviously with, with France being a Roman Catholic country, the fleur de lis having the tri points representing the Trinity. Right. Um, and so this was obviously uh, something that was adopted by the French settlers to um, as the, from their home country. 
Um, okay. Well, French and Canadian settlers. Um, yeah. So that's, that's a pretty standard French design. Then you move forward to Spain, and there's a few that work for Mobile for Spain. Now, there's the royal standard that you see on the crest, or on the shield, mm -hmm. um, with the castles and with the lions on it. And this really represents the, the crown of Spain. Um, there is another design that you will see at Fort Condi, uh, for instance, when they switch to Fort Carlotta, and that is a yellow and red design with kind of the seal of the country on it. Okay. So All right. think of it as a country flag versus a royal flag, but they both work. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And so I wonder if everyday people would see, would notice these intricacies, these differences. I mean, I don't know. I, I, you, you had to be paying attention, right, to see that, oh, there's, there's slight differences. Absolutely. There. Absolutely. That's cool. This yeah. is really, this is, this is a awesome history lesson for me so all right that's awesome and also during the revolutionary war the only revolutionary war battle to take place in mobile was during the spanish period of occupation okay yeah as they were not allied with the british during the war gotcha gotcha so then fast awesome. forward uh britain so there the, the version that you see around mobile is often incorrect um huh. the, the the union jack the flag of great britain is comprised of three other flags of three flags total um, you have St. George's Cross of England, okay. which is the red cross in the middle. You have St. Andrew's Cross of Scotland, which is the white cross behind it in the form of the X. Okay. And then overlaid on the X is St. Patrick's Cross of Ireland. And so that's a red and white overlay. When Britain, okay. And it's subtle, but it's there. Yeah. Um, on the shield, uh, the flag, the British flag that's on there is actually uh, the current British flag. When Britain uh, had control over Mobile, the Kingdom of Ireland was not part of the Kingdom of the, of the United Kingdom. Therefore, it was only Scotland and England and didn't include that red stripe on there. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> and even I had to, no idea. you know, and, and then of course, mm -hmm. Ireland became part of the kingdom and then they had a revolution in the 19 teens. Mm -hmm. um, but they are now the Republic of Ireland. But because the northern part of the country, the Ulster counties, Northern Ireland, uh -huh. that was retained by the crown. And so that's why you still see the red on there for Northern Ireland. Gotcha. Gotcha. So why do we have it incorrect? Why is it wrong? Why, why do we... Just a simple oversight, probably. Just one, just one yeah. of those things. Yeah. It's like, eh, it, it, like it works. I mean, it's... Uh, okay. All right. I can buy that. I can buy that. Uh, cl <laughs> close enough? Like, does that work? Absolutely. I mean, close enough? I yes. Guess. I don't think anybody's going to complain. Or write a letter. I'm with you. Yeah. But I like learning the intricacies of why it's technically not correct. So that's really cool. <laughs> okay. All right. What else we have? What Fast we forward have? to secession. Um, we'll get to the Confederate flag in a minute. But what a lot of people don't realize is that for about 60 days, the state of Alabama was its own independent nation. Didn't know that. So okay. between leaving the United States and joining the Confederate States of America, we were the independent Republic of Alabama. And that flag did fly over the, the state capitol, the same capitol we have today in Montgomery. Mm -hmm. And um, we do have it in the Department of Archives and History, so we know exactly what it looked like. And it was one of the more unique flags to ever fly over any capital in the United States. It was double-sided with both sides being different. Um, one side of the, it was blue. One side of the flag features a woman similar to Lady Liberty with a sword um, and the word Alabama underneath. And the other side features uh, a, a cotton bale with a rattlesnake around it. And in Latin, it says, we dare defend our rights. Gotcha. Um, which, of course, is still our state motto. So if you, are these flags... I wonder, I wonder how many of those were made. Uh, like, can't be yeah, made. Yeah, you do see them in gift shops from time to time. Okay. All right. Uh, but it's extremely rare. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And so technically, when we, we say we're the city of six flags, we include that, even though you really never see it anywhere. And it was it was only for about a month. Um, but fast forward from there to the Confederate States of America. Mm -hmm. And so Mobile, uh, being part of the Confederate States for the entirety of the war, mm -hmm. was actually under three different Confederate flags, um, starting with the stars and bars. You see just the red and white stripes mm -hmm. and then the circle of stars in the top left corner with only about seven. Uh, stars originally because that's how many states seceded. Gotcha. Then fast forward to the second, that was the first national flag. Fast forward to the second national flag, which was 80% white, just a white banner with a um, kind of the traditional cross Confederate flag in the top left corner. Uh -huh. um, the reason this was disbanded was because on the high seas with Admiral Farragut and other uh, such confederate navy man it looked like a flag of surrender uh okay like a mostly just solid white flag with a little bit of exactly. chunk in the corner okay gotcha interesting <laughs> so right. then fast forward and they added a red bar to the far right side 
Gotcha. Um, and so that was the third national. So for such a short-lived country, a lot of attention put on flags. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of flags, man, for, for a short... Yeah, that's a good point. No, that's a great point. Okay. Um, amazing. So wait, is that everything? We have more? Or is, well, there's, there's... What have we gone through? There's one more. Okay. And it's one that you don't typically see. Mobile, technically, if we're going to include the Republic of Alabama, uh-huh. then I would make the argument that we should also include the short-lived period where Mobile was technically claimed as part of an independent nation known as the Republic of West Florida. What? So the Repu- what? and this yeah. is this is a fun chapter of history that we don't hear much about in Mobile. Yeah. Um, but it actually was a revolution against Spain. Okay. When Spain um, maintained this territory, and the revolution began in Baton Rouge. Uh, so the so the West Florida portion of the United States at that at that time was from the Perdita River, which is the Baldwin County Florida line today. Okay. All the way across um, to Baton Rouge, and so. A group of citizens who were tired of being under Spanish control and wanted to be under American control revolted and t- actually uh, took over the fort in Baton Rouge, marched to St. Francisville, where they established their capital, where you still see um, all signs and all kinds of historical evidence of the, of the short revolt, um, commandeered troops, uh, got some ammunition, made a plan, and mm-hmm. said, we're going to take Mobile. And they said that if they can do that, then they'll be an independent nation and they'll uh, be a legitimate contender to maybe join the United States. Well, they made it as far as about the county line. Okay. When the Spanish uh, pushed them back, slaughtered them all. We're not having it. Put the rest in jail and that was it. Wow. Wow. Okay. But the flag of that revolt revolt is what most scholars would call the Bonnie Blue flag. So it's just a single blue flag with a single white star. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and this is, if you go to St. Francisville today, you see it on people's homes, you see it in the streets. Really? Okay. It's, 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 a, it's a strange chapter of history that they take a lot of pride in it. But it does technically include Mobile and Baldwin County. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> I, hey guys, blown. I mean, this is really, really, really cool. Really cool information. Um, so, so let's do this. I mean, we got to, you know, we got to, we got to wind down. We got to wind down the show, but tell, go ahead and tell folks. Um, clearly this gentleman is smart. Um, he knows history. He knows stuff. He loves Mobile. He loves Mardi Gras. So it's cool. So tell folks how they can connect with you. If, uh, if they want to reach out to you sure. and connect, let them know how they can do that. The best way to do it would be through, uh, my company's website It's McNair historic preservation. It's McNairHP.com. Uh, we're also have a, a, pr- a large presence on social media, um, mm-hmm. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, but, uh, we, what we do on, on those sites is we try to update people on our projects and take interesting architectural photos of either projects we're working on or um, just, just kind of general architectural history of what's happening in Mobile. And I love having your knowledge base in Mobile. It's incredible. So, man, it's been, uh, it's been awesome having you on the show. I've no, got Brooks, to, thank I, you very much. So we're going to handshake, yeah. and then we're going to – got to have a high Hit five, it. man. Got to have a high five. It's been great having <laughs> you on here. Appreciate it.